This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effect plugins, titling, video editing, and workflow tools for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, we're talking particles. More specifically, we're talking about particle illusion inside of the 2019.5 version of Continuum from Boris FX. Now, as you can see in the example I'm showing you right now, we've taken this particle effect and added it to this aerial shot of Los Angeles to give it just a little bit extra layer of realism. And the best part about particle illusion is these particles are so real, you wouldn't know that we added this element into this shot. All right, so as you can see, we are in Media Composer. We are in the most recent version of Media Composer, 2019.7 as of this recording. And what we're gonna do to get rolling is we're gonna hit Command or Control in eight on the keyboard to call up the effects palette. Now I'm just gonna type in particle illusion into the search window right up here. Particle illusion, I can just type ill and you'll see that we now get the two effects associated with particle illusion inside of Continuum 2019.5. We have a version of it that's a transition as well as the full version of Particle Illusion. Now something else that's important for me to point out is that depending on your budget, you don't necessarily need to get Particle Illusion as part of the entire version of Continuum or the complete version of Continuum. It's also available as a Continuum unit. So keep that in mind. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the particle illusion effect. I'm going to take it, drag it, and drop it down onto our shot. And you'll notice that by default, there's no standard particle that's going to start coming out of the middle of the screen. We're just going to need to get in and take a look at a preset to get us rolling with. Now, before we actually get rolling into creating the fireworks display that I showed you off the top, I do want to show you a couple of new features inside of 2019.5 of particle illusion. So let's step into effects mode, my shortcut shift and Y. If you don't have it mapped, don't worry, you can always find it right here by default at the top of your timeline. Now, as far as worrying about any parameters inside of the particle illusion effects editor window, we're not going to worry about any of that. What we're going to do right now is simply launch particle illusion. Now you'll notice the interface appears now and by default, the standard effect preset that's loaded will appear up here in the upper left hand corner. Now something else that's important to point out is that if you don't have access to all of the particle presets that I have over here on the left hand side, you can download them at any time. All you need to do is simply navigate right over here to the help menu drop down and you can come right here and download those emitters absolutely free once you've purchased Continuum free to use inside of Particle Illusion. Now I think to get us rolling, this preset is actually a good one. Now all I'm gonna do to actually add the preset to my stage over here is I'm simply just going to click on the stage anywhere where I'd like that preset to appear. So I'm just gonna hit the space bar to get it rolling with. And what I wanna have happen with this little fireworks display is I'd actually like to have it fall a little bit farther and have it happen a little bit sooner for me to give you a little bit of a demonstration of a couple of the new features inside of Particle Illusion 2019.5. So the first thing I'm going to do is navigate over here to the left to my layer window, and I'm gonna take the life value, and I'm just gonna punch in a value of 300. Now you're gonna notice that the fireworks take a second to get rolling once I hit the space bar, and I'd actually like to speed that up a little bit for the purposes of me showing this to you. So what I'm gonna do is navigate right back to the beginning. We're gonna come up to the properties for this fireworks preset, and I'm gonna come right here to the frames to preload parameter. You'll notice right now that value is set at zero, which is the default value for all of the emitters that are added. And I'm just gonna take that and just drag it down a little bit, maybe up to about there, which I think is pretty good. And you'll notice the combination of having that frames to preload set to 70 and our life set to 300, we actually get a lot of particles dropping pretty much all the way off the screen. So let's talk about a couple of the new features inside of 2019.5. The first one that I like to talk about is force. Now force you'll see right up here, I can add a force to the stage. So I'm simply gonna click force. Now you'll think that as soon as I click that, something should happen. 
But much like when I'm applying an emitter to the stage, I actually need to click somewhere to actually have this force added. So I'm just going to click right here for now. Now you'll see a little square has been added with an arrow pointing to the right hand side of the stage. What you'll also notice that's very important is that this force has been added where the time bar is. So if you take a look right over here, you'll notice it's way down here at the end. But if I click on the actual emitter itself, you'll see that this starts right back here at the beginning. So for the purposes of what we're doing, I'm actually just going to have them start at the same place. I can simply just drag that force all the way back to the beginning like such. And you'll notice that when I hit the space bar, it doesn't actually look like anything's happening. The reason for that is because nothing is actually happening. Because my force is a little bit too far away from the actual particles themselves. So what I'm going to do is stop right about here. I think this is a good place to stop. And I'm actually going to expand the force window out just a little bit. Now, what is a force? Well, think of a force like uh, the wind or something like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to use that force, or in our case, this wind, to push the particles in the direction that we want them to go, in our case, to the right. Now, keep in mind, if you take a look over here in the layers window, we can actually get in, change its direction, the angle, the width, the height, and its position. We can do that right over here for some of the parameters or over here in the layers window for others. But what I'm going to do is just grab this force and I'm going to move it towards the bottom of the screen. I'm just going to start dragging across. Now, if you take a look as I start to uh, impede, I guess is a good word, on these particles, they're now actually being pushed over. So if I stop about here and I now come back to about here and hit play, watch what happens with the particles. Right when they get about here, the force is pushing them over to the right in our case. Okay. Now what gets very interesting about the force is that the closer you move it to the emitter, the more of an effect it's going to have on the actual particles itself. So it's almost like there's a, a fan sitting right here and as soon as those particles drop it's going to immediately push them over in that direction. Now keep in mind the reason that we're previewing a little bit slower is that we're actually buffering this into the RAM of my system and once it gets to the point where it's buffered all those frames, Particle Illusion will do its best to play this back in real time for me. Now what I also want to do is I want to draw your attention to the upper right hand corner of the screen. You can see the particles value increasing telling me how many particles are on the screen at the same time which in this case is about 6500 right now. You'll see we're at the current frame of 182 of a duration of 184. Now this is looking pretty good and pretty cool having this force push these particles over. But let's take this concept one step further. Not this concept of force, but the concept of being able to get in and interact with the particles. We're just simply going to come over here. I'm going to delete that force. And what I'm now going to do is add a deflector. What is a deflector? Well, think of a deflector being something like uh, a piece of invisible steel that we're going to put into this frame that's going to interact directly with the particles. It's going to take them and deflect them in whatever direction I want them to go. So let me show you what I mean by this. I'm going to add a deflector. And the deflector I'm going to add is going to be very simple. I'm going to click right up here. I'm going to come right down here. And there's my deflector. I'm going to hit escape so that we stop adding points for our deflector. Now again, because we're sitting right here about, you know, two thirds of the way down the timeline, that is where that deflector is going to be added. I'm just going to take this, bring it all the way back to the beginning. And you'll notice as soon as I do, the particles immediately update themselves. So now what's going to happen when I come back to the beginning is I'm going to hit play. And as soon as those particles hit that deflector, you're going to notice they're going to start to bounce down it to the other side. Now I just drew a straight line for the purposes of what I was doing. But we could actually get in and we could create shapes so that it's going to come in and deflect around text or, you know, make it look like a waterfall that, that something is pushing through to reveal. So we now have a lot of control over these particles by simply being able to get in and add a force and a deflector to them. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, to be honest, I could probably sit here for another 20 minutes showing you new features, but let's get in and let's show you how I added those fireworks to the Staples Center. You know, hypothetically, you know, the Los Angeles Lakers, I'm assuming they play in the Staples Center, you know, have just won the NBA championship and some fireworks are going off to celebrate. So we want to get in and add those fireworks. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete the fireworks glitter for right now. And I'm also going to delete that deflector. Now I'm going to come over here to the search window and I'm just going to type in fireworks. And the fireworks one that we want to use is going to be basically one of our fountains. Now I don't want too much smoke in my fountains. This is the one that we're going to go with because there's no smoke happening afterwards. I don't want too much smoke flying around. 
So we're going to take this fireworks fountain and we're going to add it to our stage. Now there's a couple ways that we can do this. One way that we're going to want to do it for the purposes of what we're doing and the way that we're not necessarily going to want to do it. So how you can do it is we can simply select our fireworks fountain, click anywhere, and of course as soon as we hit play there's the fireworks fountain. But for what we're doing, I'd like to add it right dead in the middle of the screen. So let's just delete that fireworks fountain. I'm going to select it over here and just simply double click on it. I'm going to make sure we're right at the beginning of our timeline. Hit play and there's our fireworks fountain. Now I know you're probably thinking, well, Kev, you really want it over here at the Staples Center. Well, the issue that we have is I need this particle to obviously track with the Staples Center. It's not like it's a firework that's just going to go off and it doesn't really matter where it's going to appear. I need it to be over here sitting actually on top of the Staples Center. So how are we going to go about doing this? Well, let me show you. I'm happy with this particle, so I'm simply going to come down and I'm going to apply it. Once I've applied it, you're going to see it's going to appear just like it had appeared inside of Particle Illusion. Now I'm just going to come back to the beginning of our timeline for just one second, and we're now going to get in and track this. Now I know you're probably thinking, well, Kev, what you're going to do is come right up over here to our transforms, and you just want to have the emitter move. Okay, now once I turn that on, I can now, if I come down a little bit so that we can see the fireworks, get in and adjust the point like this. But I'm going to be honest with you, I don't want to do this manually. I'd really rather have Mocha give me a hand. So, if you looked very closely when I actually turned the emitter on, right down here the motion tracker slash Mocha parameter also appeared, and I can now launch Mocha Motion Tracker so that we can get in and track that move of the staple center. Now you'll see right here we have our emitter offset. I'm simply going to take it, drag it right over here to the staple center. You'll also notice that we also have the world center if we needed to get in and use that tracking parameter as well. But for right now, because I only turned on the emitter, that's what's going to be referenced when we get in and do our track. All right, let's take a quick pause for the cause. I'm going to do this track and we'll come back and see what the result looks like. All right, so my track is done. And just to make life a little bit easier and a little bit easier for you to see, I'm just going to turn on my grid and I'm just going to hit play and you'll see that our track is pretty dead on on the staple center. All right. Now, something else that's important for me to point out, and I'm just going to turn off the grid for a second, is you're going to notice that we actually have the emitter offset right here. Now, if I was to position the emitter offset right over this building here and hit play, you're going to notice the track still does exactly what the track is supposed to do. However, the actual emitter point is not where we want it to be. This emitter point is actually where the particles are going to shoot out of. Now, what I'm going to do, because I want some of them to appear right dead in the middle of the Staples Center name here, I'm just going to select that. I'm just going to hit play here. There we go. And... What's going to happen now is that when I close Mocha, I'm going to save this track. Let's just close it. I'm just going to say save. You'll notice immediately that the particle has jumped from the middle of the screen way over here to be exactly where we had our emitter lined up before. So now what's going to happen is if I come back and I drag through, you'll now see that we have the particles of the fireworks shooting off the top of the Staples Center exactly where we need it to be. Now let's take this concept one step further like I did in the intro. What we're going to do is we're going to head back into Particle Illusion and in Particle Illusion I'm going to add a couple more of those fire fireworks fountains in here. Now if you take a look what's very cool is that once we've applied that Mocha tracking information to that particle it actually now represents that inside of Particle Illusion itself in the interface. So what we're going to do now is I'm simply going to take this particle and I'm going to duplicate it. Once I've duplicated it, I'm going to take it and I'm going to move it over here to the left side of where it says center. And I'm also going to offset it so it doesn't start right away. Let's do the exact same thing again. Now you'll see by selecting one of them over here in the layers, it will show me which one I've selected over here on the stage. Let's duplicate this one. We're going to then take it. I'm going to select, yeah, sure, we'll just take that version of it here. I'm going to put it over here on the right-hand side. Again, offsetting it by quite a bit here. There we go. Perfect. And now if I hit the space bar, there's our first set of fireworks going off. There's our second set of fireworks going off. There's our third set of fireworks going off. And it's literally like the team has just won the NBA championship or maybe they've won the Stanley Cup. This is how we can get in and add realistic particles to any scene and not only add them but get in 
and track them to give them that extra layer of realism so it looks like this was shot like this at the original time. All right, now as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you to check out our sponsors, Video Guys, for all of your Avid software and hardware, as well as thousands of other products that you can check out over at videoguys.com. I also want to give a big shout out to the team at Boris FX, makers of BCC, Sapphire, and Mocha. And don't forget to use that coupon code of MC101 to get 10% off your next BCC license. And if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.